Hello friends, Kerrigan Skelly with Pinpoint Evangelism here with you today. Let's talk about the first presidential debate. Now I'm probably one of the least political people you ever meet. Uh, I'm not a conservative. I'm not a Republican. I didn't vote for Trump last time. So you can't stop the stereotypes right there. But as a follower of Jesus Christ, and I firm believer in the end times views the scripture, studying eschatology, seeking to be a watchman, to pray, to look for the signs the scripture talks about, like Jesus talked about in Matthew 24. I want to keep in, uh, in touch with what's going on in the world around me. I know I want to know what's going on. I want to know so I can address these things, and I want to know so I'm aware of these things, what's going on in the world around me. And so I watched the debate uh, late last night. I was out uh, playing basketball, getting some exercise while it was actually going on. So I waited till it was over, and then I uh, watched the uh, almost two hours, I think it was, to an hour and a half, two hours of debate. And as someone who's not a supporter of Trump, definitely a supporter of Biden, not a, you know, not a big person on Fox News, although I do watch their news sometimes, and uh, just an objective view from a street preacher here. So Chris Wallace is obviously biased uh, against Trump and for Biden. Uh, my understanding of the history between Wallace and Trump is not good. So that's a bad start right off the bat. I'm not sure why Fox News would choose Chris Wallace to do that. But he was chosen. And uh, he was obviously biased against Trump and for Biden. And Biden himself sometimes seemed to get lost. Um with all the complaining people do of the things that Trump says, the harsh things he says, the wrong things he says. I mean, Biden called, uh, he told him the shut up man. He called him the clown. And he said one other thing that came off the top of my head. And he seemed to lose his train of thought sometimes. And Wallace didn't really ask him the tough questions about his son, the payments he received from the, uh, the, the wife of the former Moscow mayor and from Ukraine and from and from China, the, the, the corrupt things going on there, he wouldn't answer the question about whether he's going to stack the Supreme Court or who, his, who he'd appoint to the Supreme Court if he did win. There's lots of tough questions uh, he never gave answers to. And he lied a lot of times, too, about the, the different things he's, he's been involved in and said yes to and has agreed to regarding the uh, most left people in his party, the Green New Deal, that kind of stuff. So he lied about those things, just straight up lied. And he was constantly calling Trump a liar. Now, I don't know if Trump, I heard him say, say any lies. But Trump had issues uh, with controlling himself, not interrupting, not being polite and loving. I mean, uh, not that I expect that out of him, but he has issues with his mouth. He's had issues like that for a long time now. And of course, one thing that was not brought up in the debate, which is which is important to me, is Trump is one of the most pro, if not the most pro, homosexual president ever. So, these are some things that I noticed during the debate. And one thing I think this should show us all is, you know, this, what we see from these presidents is really what we deserve. As a nation, we've gone down the drain. As a nation, we're wicked. As a nation, most professing Christians are hypocrites. They don't live holy lives. They don't stand up for righteousness. They cower at the fear of man and don't fear God and keep his commandments. They don't preach the gospel openly in public squares. This is what, this is what we deserve. These are the candidates we have earned. Now, Trump has done a lot of good things, uh, no doubt about it. He does some good things. I don't downplay those things. Uh, but listen, if his, his principles and the things he stands up for are wicked, I couldn't possibly vote for him. Not in good conscience. And some will say, well, you know, we can't, he's not, we're not voting for the pastor of America, we're voting for the president of America. Well, I'm a Christian. I didn't say he's supposed to be a pastor. I'm not even saying he has to be a Christian in order for me to, to vote for him. But the things that he stands up for, his principles, um, 
the promises he makes, they must be righteous. They can't be unrighteous. And if you're planning on voting for Trump, in my opinion, you're voting for the lesser of two evils. And guess what? The lesser of two evils is still evil. It's evil. And I can, as a Christian, in good conscience, vote for evil. If you can, well, you'll have to answer to God for that. Okay? And it's not uh, mandatory, even though someone would like to have it this way. It's not mandatory to vote. It's not unrighteous to vote. It's not a duty for me to vote. Keep in mind, Christians, I don't belong to this world. I'm a stranger, an alien, and a pilgrim in this place. Yes, I'm a citizen of the United States of America. My loyalty ultimately belongs to Jesus Christ, not to America, not to be a patriot, none of those things. My allegiance is with Jesus and righteousness, and I will call out sin no matter where it's found. Republican, conservative, Democrat, liberal, whatever. I'm going to call it out as sin and call them to repentance because they're wicked. And keep in mind, voting will not change America. You know, if you look at the Supreme Court right now, um, some, most of them were supposed to be conservative. You know, they're they're put on there by Republican. I think two are put on there by by Clinton. Oh no, two by Obama, one by Clinton, and then the rest I think were put on by uh, Bush, H. W. Bush or W. Bush. I can't remember. And now we have, uh, you know, the rest of them being put on by Trump. And so if this one goes through, it'll be three by Trump, um, three by Bush, two by Obama, and one by Clinton. So if you add it up, you know, conservatives and Republicans already had the majority in the Supreme Court. And we're making this a big, a big deal because this woman who's supposedly pro-life and is a Roman Catholic... Um, even, I think, she's been called a charismatic Roman Catholic, um, is being put to the court, and maybe she'll make it through. Maybe she'll be uh, put through the ringer like uh, Justice Brett Kavanaugh was before he got uh, confirmed. But the fact is, that doesn't change anything. It hasn't changed anything yet. Why should we expect that to change in the future? I don't know. I don't expect that to change. But you know who's really accountable for abortion in America? those who know it's wrong and it's evil and will not stand up against it. How many abortion clinics are near you? And how many times have you gone out in front of them, called the people who are going into it to repentance, plead with them not to kill their baby and take their baby's lives, and call the doctors and nurses the murders they are? How many of you have done that? But yet you'll vote for a Republican who still uh, funds Planned Parenthood and it's pro-LGBT, the most pro-LGBT uh, president ever. And he, he puts three justices on there, and we'll see what happens. You're depending upon them to change things? No, what real change will happen, friends, is when we preach the gospel. We live holy lives. We're salt and light in this place, not putting our light under a bushel, under a bed, but putting it on top where it belongs, letting our light shine before men. And we're preaching the word of God. That's what will change America. That's what will change the world. It will change all the nations of the world. Not political things. Not laws. Politicians cannot be trusted. I don't care who they are. They all lie. And now while President Trump has done some good things, I don't think he's lied too much to us that I'm aware of. He does like to engage in hyperbole about himself. He likes to exaggerate about himself and his accomplishments and things he's done. And some of you are just duped by it. He just he says something, you just believe it. You don't even consider it or look into it or check what he's saying. Just like the liberals do with Biden. And you're on dangerous ground. And what this what this this you know, if it does show us anything, it shows us this, this debate. That men cannot be trusted. That we cannot put our hope in Trump and Biden and Republicans and Democrats and liberals, whatever, libertarians, independents. We need to put our trust in Jesus Christ. We need to repent as a nation. All the wickedness this nation is involved in. I've been standing against it for over 15 years now, consistently. Going back to 2004, so over 16 years now. Consistently on the streets. Coming against the evils of our nation, the evils of the world, and preaching righteousness and preaching salvation. What are you doing? Don't think that you can go to the 
the voting place or fill out your absentee mail-in uh, ballot and put your ex on Trump or Biden, whoever you're voting for, and say, think your job is done in trying to change your nation. The only way this nation will truly change and become loving and selfless and do what they're supposed to do is they turn to Jesus and repent to get transformed. So that's, that's what I would say about the first presidential debate. And I would encourage you to really examine yourself on these issues because many of you, I've seen it, many of you are so caught up in politics. You post more about politics on Facebook than you do the Word of God. You, you care, you defend Trump even when he does evil things. You defend him. You're no different than a liberal defending Biden and his evil things and his him you know forgetting things and not knowing things, not calling him out on him. You're just as bad as them. And you're deceived and blinded. Jesus would never have you justify anyone's sins. If you're gonna justify his sins, the Bible says you're an abomination to God. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both of them alike are an abomination to God. So while it's not a sin to vote, not a sin to be informed on political things, uh, or to vote for someone who has biblical practices and principles, even if he's not a Christian, and of course two things at the forefront would be abortion, LGBT stuff. And our president fails, our current president fails on both those things. He can say he's pro he can say that he's pro-life, he can say all kinds of things, but the proof's in the pudding. You know a tree bites fruit. So I appreciate Trump and what President Trump and all the things he's done. I respect him and honor him for the position he's in. But I couldn't in good conscience ever vote for him as a Christian because I'm a follower of Jesus Christ and I hate evil anywhere it's found. And I love righteousness anywhere it's found. And the Bible makes it clear. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. So you can vote for the lesser of two evil if you want. But you need to understand. You're still voting for evil. God bless you.